Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Beloved of God, this is Father Michael along with the rest of the God Minute team. Thank you for joining us today and praying with us in this moment of grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my my mouth mouth shall declare your praise. Psalm 5. Pray about your enemies. Lord, listen to what I say to you. I am upset. My King and my God, listen to my voice. I am asking you to help me. I am praying to you. Lord, every morning you listen to my voice. At sunrise I will turn to you for help, and I will wait for you to answer. I will bend low in your holy temple, and I will worship you. Lord, help me to follow your right way, so that I do not go the wrong way. My enemies never speak what is true. They only want to destroy people. Their mouth has the smell of an open grave. Their tongues say nice things, but they are all lies. Please make people who turn to you happy. Make them always sing with joy. Lord, you bless those who live in a right way. Your love is like a shield that keeps them safe. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 5, verses 43 to 48. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good, and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the first part of today's scripture passage, our Lord reminds us of an ancient command from God in the book of Leviticus. This command reads, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I was always confused by this reference our Lord makes because the second part of his teaching is not in Leviticus. Nowhere does the law of Moses teach you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But through some study, I learned that Jesus' words in this passage refer to a common interpretation of the ancient law prevalent in Jesus' day. This interpretation understood the command, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, to mean, you shall love other Israelites as yourself. Many people understood the term neighbor to refer to Israelites only. Logically, if someone interprets the law in this way, this leaves the love of one's enemy out of the equation. Our Lord corrects this misinterpretation of the law. He teaches his followers that everyone is considered a neighbor to them. He even gives us the parable of the Good Samaritan to reinforce this truth. Jesus pairs this teaching with one of the most outrageous commands in the Gospels. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now, if you're like me, you hear this and ask, how can I become perfect like God? 
Doesn't Jesus know how weak and sinful I am? But our feelings of inadequacy do not change the words in Scripture. Jesus indeed calls each of us to become perfect. The standard Jesus sets for his followers is to become perfect in love. He teaches us that through grace, we must imitate God the Father who is merciful to all people, good or evil. As Christians, we only have one true enemy. Our enemy is sin, not other sinners. We must fight sin in our lives, but never hate others who sin, even when they sin against us. Why should we do this? Well, St. Thomas Aquinas teaches us that first, we must love our enemies because Jesus commanded it from us. Secondly, we should do so because that is how God loves us. Despite our sinfulness, God loved us enough to offer his only son to die for our sins so that we may be reconciled with him. Thirdly, we should love our enemies because doing so makes us children of the Most High God. By imitating God's merciful love to all people in our lives, not just those who love us in return, we grow in charity and holiness. And one day we'll reap the rewards promised to us by our Lord our most merciful and loving Savior. Let the name of Jesus be praised, both now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for an outpouring of God's love into our hearts so that we may love our neighbor and be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Father, hear the prayers of the beloved who cry out to you today. Pour out on us your grace and mercy. Let us be faithful to your commands and seek to love all those we encounter with the treasure of your love instilled within each one of us. We ask this as we do all things in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, thank you so much for joining us in prayer today. Let's do all that we can to spread that love of God so that others might know, love, and serve him as we seek to know, love, and serve him. In the meantime, take good care of yourself and one another, and we'll see you tomorrow.